The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge sum. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down and did him homage and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants, who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling on his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had his fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, Unless, you for, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. As I said in the beginning of our Mass, today's readings are really about mercy and forgiveness. And we hear this story of the uh, unfaithful servant. And it needs a little bit of explanation for us to kind of understand the context of what's happening. You know, when Jesus talks about the amount the servant owed, you know, he says in the scriptures, it says a huge amount. And in the footnotes of the New American Bible, it says that 10,000 talents. That really doesn't tell us anything because I don't know what a talent is or how much it was in the time of Jesus. But imagine if you owed the entire United States debt, which right now is about $25 trillion. If you individually owed that debt and they came to you and said, okay, we want you to pay that back now, what are the chances that you could ever pay it back in your entire lifetime or for all eternity? You'd never be able to pay that debt back. And so when the servant stops and says, I need a little more time, how ridiculous is that statement? No amount of time will be enough for this first servant to pay back the debt. And so when the king decides to forgive the debt, it's an incredible gift of mercy that this servant receives. But before that, what does he say? The king or the master says, I'm going to sell off my servant, his wife, his children, and his property, to cover the debt. So he's going to try and at least get some of his money back. And instead he decides, you know what? You're right. I'm going to give it all away and let you have it because I have enough. I don't need your money to survive. I don't need your debt to be paid off for me to be okay. So he forgives it out of mercy and forgiveness. And of course then the servant turns around and he finds the very next person who owes him a a few, a small amount, you know, a couple hundred denarii. In our time, maybe, you know, a car payment. Instead of paying off the car in three years, we're going to pay it off in five years. It's doable to pay off this debt. And the second servant says the exact same words. Give me some more time, and I'll pay you back. And of course, that first servant says, no, I want my money now. 
and I want all of it right now. But it's really not about the money, because what does the servant do? He doesn't threaten to sell the servant for money and his family and his property. No. What does he say? But he refuses, and instead, he had him put in prison until he could pay the debt back. Well, I don't know what prisons were like in the time of Jesus, but I assume they're similar to today. And prisoners in prison don't make a lot of money. So there's no possibility that the first servant could ever get his money back by putting the guy in jail. He would have got his money back if he had given him a little more time. But by putting him into jail, he assures himself of never getting the money because this guy can't earn an income. He can't possibly pay it back. So what is that first servant thinking? It's all about revenge. It's all about wrath. He doesn't care about getting his money back. He cares about getting his pound of flesh. He wants to punish this person for not being able to pay back the debt. So just like the king, he doesn't care about the money, but he holds on to the anger and wrath in his heart. And that's the message that Jesus wants to deliver. You have two choices. You can hold on to that anger, that wrath, and it leads to a dark place in our lives. It leads us into bitterness and makes us empty. Or you can be like that king and offer mercy and forgiveness. Of course, then, at the end of the story, what happens to the first servant? The king finds out, and he says, you know what? I'm not going to forgive your debt. But instead of selling the servant to get his money back, he doesn't care about the money. He says, you're going to get the same treatment you gave the other servant. I'm going to hand you over to the torturers and the prison until you can pay that debt back which of course means he can never pay it back. And so he suffers the fate that he intended for the other servant. And that's what happens in the kingdom of God. If we can live a life of mercy and forgiveness, then mercy and forgiveness will be given to us. If we hold on to our anger and our frustrations and our wrath, then ultimately that's the life that we're going to have. We get to choose. As I always like to say, you don't get to choose what happens to you in your life in many ways and many times in your circumstances, but you do get to choose how it's going to affect you, how you're going to respond to it. And even if your first response isn't the best response, you'll have ample opportunities to learn and to grow. God will give you plenty of opportunities to see his love in each situation to choose differently than that first choice, to make good choices in our lives. That's what God desires from us. Not necessarily the first response, which sometimes when something bad happens to us is to strike out, to be angry, and to be wrathful. That's who we are. God understands that. But over time, what he desires for you to see is to let go of that anger, that wrath, and to choose a path of mercy and forgiveness. In that way, you heal yourself. Think about it. If you're always holding on to anger and wrath, doesn't that make us bitter and frustrated in life and unhappy? And none of us want that. By offering mercy and forgiveness, we give ourselves the opportunity to heal, whether that's someone who's hurt us or a situation that has caused us pain. We can bring healing to our lives by offering mercy and forgiveness. It's not just about the other person it's not just about the other situation. It's about us as well. Our ability to give healing and peace in our lives. And that's not easy to do. But Paul, in our second reading, gives us a good indication of how we can go about and do that. Listen carefully, because Paul has some really good advice. None of us lives for ourselves, and no one dies for oneself. If we live, we live in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord, so that whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. If you can live a life of mercy and forgiveness, you'll live in the Lord. Trust in him and give your life to him. And the truth is that a happiness lies in finding God in our life, in living in him, and knowing that ultimately he desires to be with you all the days of your life. 
That's the goal. Mercy and forgiveness lead to happiness and joy. And happiness and joy lead us to eternal life with God the Father in the kingdom of heaven. Those are the message that God wants to deliver through the life of Jesus Christ and through the apostles and through the church. And he gives us the Eucharist to strengthen us, to give us the courage and the strength to go out and bear witness to that gospel. Because in our world today, not just today, but in most days, it's a world of anger and wrath, vengeance and betrayal. And God wants us to reject that. And nourished with the Eucharist, we can turn away and say, we want to live a life of happiness. And we are not going to allow the world to make us unhappy. God desires that happiness. The world events, they will occur as they occur. We choose how to live our lives. What choice are we going to make? Are we going to live in the Lord, live in mercy and forgiveness? Or are we going to live in the world and choose wrath and anger? Your happiness lies in you alone. You will decide it, not the events of the world. You can, people can blame the world. They can blame events in their lives. But the truth is, we decide whether we be happy or not. You know, when I talk to kids in family faith or in the school, they ask a lot of moral questions and issues of the day and cultural issues. But one question that always comes up is heaven and hell. They always ask about, you know, if God is loving, how can he send anyone to hell? And my answer is not complicated. It's rather simple. He doesn't send anyone to hell. God never condemns anyone, ever. The bottom line is, is that you choose to have a relationship with God. And if you choose not to have a relationship with God, he loves you so much, he loves your free will, that he will let you choose that path. And so if you choose to reject him in this life, when you stand before him in the next life, he will accept that choice. That's his mercy and love. Forgiveness. He will let you choose. In this life, you get to choose happiness and peace despite what the world tries to put on you. The choice is ours. It's not easy to choose it every day, and some days we will fall down and fail. But each and every day we're given the opportunity to choose love and mercy over hate and anger. Let us be nourished by the Eucharist to always choose love, mercy, and forgiveness.